Take two. This is very hard material to talk about. Um, the reason is I'm afraid what anything that I say is going to insult somebody or piss them off or something. But I wasn't going to produce a video today. A lot of things have been breaking all over the place, so I've been doing a lot of stuff. But I was thinking about comments that have been left in the past and recently about steel versus aluminum things on these machines tools and I just I just want to share what goes through my mind what I'm thinking when I read these type of comments and they're left by professional machinists too you know it's hobbyists it's professionals and all of them when you read them you just I me I just start scratching my head going I don't know um, <laughs> um, for instance the comments left that I should be um, making arbors the um, face mill arbors out of steel rather than aluminum because of rigidity I have a steel arbor I have three aluminum arbors I don't see any difference and I'll show you why on the two machines here the mini mill I mean he laid in the mini mill why it to me it doesn't make any difference the machines flex and I'll show you that um, so yeah leave comments straighten me out if I'm wrong about this but, uh, another recent comment was left on the quick change tool posts there's uh, two types. There's the piston type, which everybody knows, the Gen Win A2Z. And there's the type that all the professional um, lathes use, the big full ones are, where you put the tool holder in and it clamps it, but it pulls it towards the body. So I've got both types. Um, aluminum Gen Win piston and then and again it's because it makes it more rigid when you pull it in this was the first one that I bought and it's steel holders are steel and when you slide it in there and you clamp this the way it's working it is pulling the holder into the body um, I don't see any difference but on the two machines um, in turning, in parting, and yet the comment says the second they went to this type of holder, it was so much rigidity that uh, chatter went away, finishes changed, and I'm just scratching my head going, huh? I don't know. And when you think about it, too, um, because it was said that the force is pushing the tool in, so if you're holding it out then you can move but if you're pulling the holder into the body now it can't go in so it's more rigid but then i'm thinking no um it's a double the force is in but the force is also down so you're solid at the bottom because you're pushing it in as it tries to tilt down and you're pulling it away so I don't think there's that much significance or more rigidity in it, but I don't know. And thinking about it too, you know, you'll see in the video how everything moves. And I don't think even the big full-on bridge ports or whatever lathes are that solid either. They can't be. And a lot of people too are make the comment why or ask the question why do you take such light cuts well it's because the machines flex and I don't want to break them I'm not going to do a hundred thousands cut on these machines because what gives is the gib screws I've had a couple of times something grab and the tip of the gib screw gets flattened out now you got to go through the whole machine and fix everything and realign it and get it all back together so I may make a hundred thousands yeah I've made a hundred thousands cuts on these things I turn it in five thousands and boom I'm taking some material off but again what is that 
Sorry about that, no reason for the car alarm to go off, but now I forgot where I was. Uh, uh, I think I was saying that I don't think even the full-on machines are that solid. Um, I know it's, you know, everything flexes, steel flexes, aluminum flexes. So um, first thing I'm just gonna show is a project that I made on the three axis CNC machine. And then I'll show you why my thoughts are, are about rigidity on the mini lathe and then I'll show on the mini mill. So again, I just read these comments and I just scratch my head. These are the thoughts that I have when I read these, okay? So see you next Friday, guys. All right, one project done and there it is. I could not have made this without that CNC uh, machine. Granted, it took hours for it to carve all the little holes here for everything to fit, but first, I just want to say a word of caution. Wherever you plug the USB connector for the mill, the CNC, your COM port can change, and you need to verify that the baud rate matches between uh, the universal G-code sender and your COM port because I was doing some machining on something else and then all of a sudden it just took off in left field, almost broke the machine. So um, this, because the table isn't that big, this is three parts. There's three here, four, one, two, three, four, yeah, four, and then a two strip. So I had to rebuild the box here to fit the new stuff. But the reason why is inevitably I'll have two or three of these guys out at the same time. You close the drawer and they shift. And then I'm trying to figure out the order again. This one's right now in the lathe, but. So that problem is solved. I can open and close the drawer and I don't have to worry about anything moving and the sizing is, is, is really nice, so I'm loving this project. Okay, so I wanna just kinda check what the, I lock this guy down and move him in. I can check the spindle here, just get it on some number. Ah, I guess I can get it on zero. There. So if I grab the spindle, there's movement here, right? Yeah. Run out, you can probably check the run out too, but. Um, so this is not solid. Now if I were to grab the compound itself, I guess you can see my thumb in there, and move that, <laughs> there's a lot of movement in there. Clunk, clunk. And yet I've got this thing, if I'm tilting it up and down this way, you can see my thumb, not much, but there is, this would be, I think this is the saddle doing this number. So nothing on a mini lathe is really that solid. I don't think anybody's done more mods than I have to get this thing solid. Uh, yeah, grab the motor back here. Yep. Wow. <laughs> Pulling it to the right, <laughs> pushing it to the left. So. The whole saddle's moving on this guy. Um, I wonder where that that cl this clunk was coming from. Yeah, it just snaps. That has. Oh, it's tilting. The saddle is tilting. If I lift it up and down. No. <laughs> I don't know where that one's coming from, but just a heads up on this. You know, I've done a lot of modifications. A lot of upgrades to try to get this thing solid. So, using um, an aluminum tool holder versus steel doesn't matter. Um, what else was said? Oh, yeah, the different types of tool holders, whether it's a piston locking it or pulling it in, doesn't matter again. Nothing matters because this sucker is loose. I know the camera's at a pretty bad angle, but this is, again, just to prove a point. I've had people say, you know, you really need to make your arbor out of steel and so on and so forth. But um, 
there. I guess I'll just point it up for people. If I push on this collet, look at this. So anything, you know, this is the column moving. It falls right back in the same spot. Pretty much, yeah. It's falling right there within a few tenths. So making an arbor out of steel with a shoulder versus aluminum doesn't make any difference. My soft jaws, aluminum. They don't need to be steel. I've learned that the machine, what the weaknesses are to the machine, what moves and gives, and I've learned how to work around it to get good finishes and to get precision um, jobs done.